The other thing that I'd really like to, to hammer home, point two, is the idea that there's only one possible interpretation of that difference between the satellite observations that Senator Cruz showed and the model simulations. <clears throat> That's wrong. It's demonstrably untrue. There are four possible explanations which are not mutually exclusive for those differences. One is uncertainties in the observations, which as I've just mentioned are large. Another is uh, the model error, models too sensitive uh, that Senator Cruz and, and Professor Christie uh, advanced. Then there are errors in so-called external factors that uh, the model simulations are run with. Things like volcanic cooling or uh, anthropogenic um, human-caused particulate pollution. Even if you had a perfect computer model of the climate system that captured all the important real-world climate physics, if you leave out cooling influences that the real world has experienced over the last 18 years, for example, a succession of small volcanic eruptions in the early 21st century, you're going to get the wrong answer. <laughs> the real world, and that's in fact what happened, uh, experienced a succession of moderate volcanic eruptions in the early 21st century that was systematically left out that cooling influence was left out of all the model simulations Senator Cruz mentioned. Another um, explanation is internal variability of the climate system, so natural noise, stuff like El Niños, La Niñas, uh, the so-called um, interdecadal Pacific Oscillation. So this is natural variability in the climate system, and by chance, the real world can experience one particular sequence of warming and cooling, natural warming and cooling events that is not in the model simulations. That's expected. You know, we don't look at very short 10 or 18 year periods of record uh, and expect them to provide uh, deep diagnostic information. Those short periods of record are intimately affected by the natural noise of the climate system. That's why in climate science what you do is you look at long sweeps of time and you diminish, you reduce the effects of natural fluctuations on climate. Or you look at not one cherry-picked 18-year period of record, you look at all possible 18-year periods of record and you do the statistics on all possible 18-year periods with different start and end points. Here's a simple analogy you wouldn't look at the minute-by-minute minute record of day trading on one single day uh, on the Dow and make inferences about long-term structural changes in the Dow Jones Index. You would look at long periods of time, how the Dow had behaved over years or decades, or you would look at the statistics of all individual days. You wouldn't look at one day. And in the same way, it's impermissible, it's cherry-picking, <laughs> to look at one noisy period of record which starts in 1998 uh, at the time of a big El Nino warm event and ends uh, near uh, the present after a number of cooler La Nina events and a certain phasing of this thing called the interdecadal Pacific Oscillation, you wouldn't look at that and expect to have reliable inferences about uh, long-term human effects on climate arising from gradual human-caused changes in levels of heat-trapping greenhouse gases. The whole premise that you can look at one cherry-picked piece of, 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 uh, of record and you can ignore observational uncertainties and you can ignore all the other things I mentioned, internal variability, um, errors in things like volcanic effects, uh, and make some finding about whether there is or is not a human effect on climate, that's preposterous. It was a charade. What happened in those three hours uh, at the data or dogma hearing had nothing to do with elucidating the nature and causes of climate change.
It was about scoring political points 